Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. My name is Anis Najah Mazlan and for this conference, I'm going to present about my research paper, which is the Regulatory Frameworks of Retail Solid Waste Management, a Comparative Analysis of Malaysia, France and Singapore. That is written by me and Associate Professor Dr. Ani Munirah Muhammad. Okay, moving on to the introduction part. First of all, we have to acknowledge that solid waste management involves the discipline of six stages, which are the generation, storage, collection, transportation, processing, and disposal. There is also the retail solid waste, which is produced from retail establishment, such as food waste, which forms the majority component of solid waste, followed by plastic, glass, and metal. So currently, there is a variability of Malaysian retail solid waste law that is caused by inconsistencies in managing solid waste, in which the government is trying to improve by introducing various policies and legislation. So as one of the efforts to imp improve uh, local legislation, it is important to acknowledge the law in developed countries such as in France and Singapore, especially when France holds the fourth position on the Global Sustainability Index as well as Singapore, which is advanced in retail solid waste minimization guidelines. And this can be conducted through doctrinal legal research or library-based research. So the aim is to compare the regulatory frameworks in France, Singapore and Malaysia to give suggestions for improvement of the local legislation in relate to the solid waste management in the retail sector. Okay, moving on to the second part, which is the comparative analysis of retail solid waste regulatory frameworks in France and Malaysia. So the comparative analysis is conducted through the six stages of solid waste management, as you can see in the table. Okay, so uh, the first stage is the generation stage. In France, the generation of solid waste is governed by the France Anti-Waste Law 2016 and the Anti-Waste for a Secular Economy Law or AGEC Law. While in Malaysia, it is governed by the Solid Waste and Public Cleansing Management Act 2007, which is the main legislation governing the solid waste management in Malaysia, and the subsidiary legislation under the Act 672, which is the ICI Regulations 2018. So the ICI stands for Institution, Commercial and Industrialized. Okay, next is the second stage, which is storage. So in the solid waste storage in France, unique logo is being enforced. This indicates that the waste has to be separated and could not be mixed with other sources types of waste such as household waste. And alongside the logo, the sorting methods are also specified. While the storage in Malaysia is about maintaining good storage sites for collection services generally, in accordance with the ICI regulations 2018. So this is made without any specification to the label or color. Next is the third and fourth stage, which are collection and transport. So in France, a separate collection system is enforced for recyclable and non-recyclable waste. France set up a separate collection at source for at least paper, metal, plastic, and glass. And the collection and transport of waste may include the use of bins, containers, and transport vehicles. So this is similar with Malaysia under the ICI. But in France, they also enforce the EPR under the EGEC. So this included in the separate collection system because it implies that the producers take over the responsibility for collecting or taking back the, wa the waste for the purpose of sorting, treating, and recycling. Okay, next is processing of food waste. So France imposed mandatory recycling and composting for food waste. 
and food waste is important because it is the majority component of retail solid waste and the national recycling rate recorded in France is 42%. Malaysia, on the other hand, has implemented sources separation initiative in 2015, which encouraged the retailers to segregate the waste, and the national recycling rate is 35%. However, the data is obtained from the states that apply Act 672 only, which comprise of six states and two federal territory, without taking into account the recycling rate in the rest of the states. This is actually because the data is produced by SW Corp, which is the regulatory body that enforced the Act 672. For the last stage, which is the disposal, besides composting and recycling, France also used landfill, but they have imposed law to ban landfill for untreated waste, while Malaysia, the main retail solid waste disposal currently is only sanitary landfill. So if the retailers want to compose, it must be on their own initiative. And in Malaysia, the law do not oblige the retailers to conduct recycling. They only oblige waste separation at source, which encourage recycling. So this is different from France that apply mandatory recycling. Next is the punitive measures for the retailers. So France has imposed fines 15,000 euro per legal entity and impose mandate corrective actions as well as the restrict the operations or sanctions. While in Malaysia, the, the punishment is only 10,000 ringgit for incompliances for each stage. Okay, moving on to the third part, which is the comparative analysis of retail solid waste in Singapore and Malaysia. Okay, for the first stage, the Okay, moving on to the third part, which is the comparative analysis of retail solid waste in Singapore and Malaysia. Okay, for the first stage, the generation of solid waste in Singapore is governed by the Environmental Public Health Act or EPHA, as well as the Resource Sustainability Act. While Malaysia, it is similar, which is the Act 672 and the ICI. So next is the storage in Singapore. So the waste is stored in mobile garbage bin or MGBs or a plastic receptacle and labels. So in Singapore, it is also important to have clearly labeled food waste bin to allow stakeholders to easily identify the correct point for the disposal of food waste. So this helps to prevent people from mistaking the food waste bins as general waste bins. In Malaysia, there is only make available a receptacle which is focused on the maintain in good order without any particular made to the label or color. Okay, moving on to collection and transportation in Singapore. So the classes of retail solid waste is divided into class A and B. For class A, it is inorganic waste or recyclable waste, while class B is organic waste or food waste. Singapore also set up food waste collection points with clear signage, such as with banners and signboards. For Malaysia, it is similar, which is the separate collection of recyclable and non-recyclable. The solid waste is then transported to the processing facility, which is the next stage. So under the Resource Sustainability Act, Singapore imposed mandatory treatment system in the design plan of business premise. So this regulation is not available in Malaysia. Singapore also imposed mandatory reporting of waste data, waste reduction plan, waste disposal and waste recycling. While in Malaysia, they oblige the retailers to separate the waste and record data on collection services only. For the last stage, which is the disposal in Singapore, the final general will, general waste, which has very little recyclability, will go straight to one of the waste to energy or WTE incineration plants. So in there, 
the waste will be burned and the heat will be used to generate electricity. While in Malaysia, the common retail solid waste disposal method is still sanitary landfill. So for the incompliance part in Singapore, the maximum punishment for illegal disposal of waste is $50,000 and $100,000 for repeated offender or jail for up to 12 months and the authority can also confiscate vehicle. While in Malaysia, the punishment for illegal disposal of waste is minimum 10,000 ringgit up to 100,000 ringgit for illegal disposal and uh, the offender can also be imprisoned and the jail punishment maximum is 5 years. So as a conclusion, so as a conclusion, France and Singapore comprehensive legislation can inspire Malaysia to adopt sustainable legislation. And what I mean by sustainable law is the law that are able to divert the amount of waste from being disposed in the landfill. And among the suggestions for improvement in the local legislation is to apply uniform legislation for retail industry regardless of the application of Act 672. Next is the incorporation of clauses of waste segregation which is very crucial in sustainability in tenancy agreement or licensee agreement for the retailers and improve improve the storage facility through labeling, especially for food waste, and also obligation to retailers to donate unsold food product, impose sanction on retailers for any incompliance, and mandatory composting or anaerobic digester machine. So that is all for me. Thank you very much for watching.